Entering enclosed spaces in a ship is a fairly common operation, yet accidents happen and injuries do occur far too often. In this video, you will hear why a rescue might have to be made, see some of the equipment used in a rescue, and you will observe a rescue drill. The scenario for the drill is a crew member has become unconscious while working in a ballast tank because the fresh air ventilation into the tank was accidentally turned off. The reasons for rescue could broadly be defined into two categories, asphyxiation and injury. If someone is overcome by toxic gases or lack of oxygen, it is a life-threatening emergency requiring breathing equipment and timely evacuation. There may be no warning. If someone falls or slips, he may have to be immobilized and evacuated by means of a stretcher. The rescue operation may not require special breathing apparatus, but may still require timely evacuation. For our drill, we have enlisted the help of an enclosed space rescue expert from the Longview, Washington Fire Department to observe the drill and to offer advice and tips on how to make the drill more effective. So it's very critical that you shorten your, make your anchors as short as possible, tighten the rope, the terminating point to the patient as short as possible, so every, because every foot matters, especially when you're coming out of the hole. Well, the equipment that the ship's crew has assembled is something that's specific to their ship. And this is a self-contained breathing apparatus that they can wear in an atmosphere where there's no oxygen or low oxygen. They've got flashlights so they can see because most of the time in these spaces it's dark. Um, you also don't want to put artificial lighting in there if there's a potential for an explosive atmosphere. Um, fire extinguisher is always handy to have by. And um, this is their litter that they use. It's uh, a spinal immobilization litter and it also is very small because the hole that they're gonna possibly uh, bring the patient out of is really small. So they can't use a full size Stokes basket. And then the harnesses that the rescuers are wearing have uh, retrieval loops on the back so if one of them could turn around. This here you can attach the rope to if they were to fall inside the space and they can be retrieved this way. It holds them vertical. If there was just a regular waist belt and they attached to the, to the waist belt, when you tried to put, retrieve them, they would slump over and they wouldn't fit through the hole. You wouldn't be bringing them out in a vertical position. So that's why that they're there. Plus it also allows them freedom for working. When the rope's attached to their back, they can potentially get a bunch of work done too. Another vital piece of equipment for all enclosed space procedures is a resuscitator. The rescue team should always bring any equipment they might need and ensure it's ready for use prior to attempting any rescue. For this rescue drill simulation, the ventilation fan supplying fresh air trips off and the oxygen level drops to a dangerous level. This goes unnoticed by the workers who suddenly begin to lose coordination and get tired. As the drill progresses, one worker collapses and the other worker does the correct thing by leaving the space. Even rescue operations that require entry into an enclosed space should follow the company's procedures. Prior to entering, the atmosphere should be checked and confirmed safe for breathing. Otherwise, SCBA must be used. Only then should the rescue team enter the enclosed space. You don't want to have everybody go into the space, but you need people available to assist in rope work and so on. The rescue team is alerted and puts on their breathing apparatus in preparation to enter the enclosed space. A rescue can be anywhere from a couple of minutes to hours, depending on the circumstances. You never want to be short of air. It's okay to have plenty of extra air. These bottles are probably rated for a half, of a half an hour. Under heavy work, they may get 10 minutes maximum out of it. So 10 minutes isn't really a heck of a lot of time. 
If the person is at the bottom of a hole, already has a rescue harness on, and it's merely a clip in and retrieve, that's easy. But if they're down a long uh, void space with obstacles in the way, it can take more time, and this wouldn't be enough air. Two members of the rescue team now have their breathing apparatus on and enter the space through the manhole. After they monitor the atmosphere down in the hole to find out whether or not they need to wear SCBA or not wear SCBA, then they can go down and pay, package the patient for removal. If they have fractures, you got to immobilize those. If the person isn't breathing, you're going to have to get them out as quickly as possible so you can get oxygen on them, get some interventions in place. So that's what their job is. Meanwhile, other members of the rescue team start rigging the evacuation tackle to lift the casualty from the enclosed space. So you want this pulley to be as high as possible and as directly over the hole as possible, okay? This is what they call a change of direction. It's got a high pickoff point and it's changing direction in the rope. Then you need to have some mechanical advantage. This patient weighs 175 or 180 pounds hand-over-handing a rope without mechanical advantage is exceedingly difficult. Once inside the space, the rescue team determines that the worker has no physical injury, and it is safe and quicker to evacuate him using his harness ring rather than a stretcher. The rescue rope is tied off to the lifting ring of the harness, and the signal is given to the attendant that the casualty is ready to be heaved up. Upon evacuation, the casualty is then quickly laid out and resuscitation equipment is used to provide him with oxygen. There should be a team standing by to transport the casualty to the sick bay or other area to further evaluate the condition of the injured crew member. As you have seen, time is critical to save a life. It is very important to practice good teamwork within the entry and rescue team. While the rescue team gets ready to enter the enclosed space, the others get the evacuation tackle rigged and ready to heave out the casualty. Other entry team members get the stretcher and resuscitation equipment prepared for quick deployment. Enclosed space rescue drills should be run periodically. Efficiency comes with practice. It may make the difference between life and death for one or more of your coworkers.